Hi everyone, I'm Steph with Creation and welcome to our virtual world. Thank you so much for joining us today. Just a reminder that the top tipper will win a five minute one-on-one -on -one video call with Lauren right after this Q&A. So make sure your Stage It profile is updated with your current information. So not only is Lauren our beloved Linda Tran, she's also an accomplished actress, stage Hi performer, everyone. and I'm voice Steph with Creation and welcome artist. to our virtual world. Oh. Anyways, <laughs> she was an accomplished actress, stage performer, and voiceover artist for cartoons and video games. So let's welcome Lauren Tom. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Wait, let me center myself a little bit. There we go. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is so funny. I can't hear you guys and see you guys. I really wish I could. <laughs> but I'm very excited to be here. Um, so thank you, Stephanie, and thank you, everyone at Creation. They always say, you know, that um, happiness is having something to look forward to. So I was definitely looking forward to this. And um, I really am sending out a big, you know, Mama Tran hug to everybody that's on right now. Thank you for joining. And uh, it's just a, a lift to be here. Um, Gosh, let's see. I guess this is all self-driven, isn't it? I kind of want to, I just so want to interact with you guys. And it, this is like the COVID lockdown where you want to hug everyone and you can't. Um, so maybe I should just, oh, hi. Oh, look at this. Angie, BJ Thomas. Uh, no, BJ Christmas, not BJ Thomas. Hello, hello. Oh, I just love you guys. Virtual hug. Oh my gosh, Sam's girl, Michael Tonis. Okay. Um, Judy's here, Krista. Oh, wow. Jonathan. Okay, I, I have to stop reading everybody, right? Um, but it's so nice to see people. And hello, hugs. Okay, maybe I should just take a question over here. All right, calm down. Let's just all breathe and center ourselves here. Um, <laughs> here's the first one from Brittany Marriott. Um, my question is, what was it like working on the show Friends? Oh my gosh. Well, that was really fun um, because, you know, <laughs> I still remember that when my agent called me, I was uh, on the treadmill uh, eating a donut. So it was kind of like, you know, calories in, calories out. And um, she called and asked me just straight out, uh, we got an offer for you to be on an arc of Friends. How would you feel about that. And I literally almost tripped off of the treadmill because <laughs> I, I couldn't believe what she was just saying. And so I said, well, let me think about that for a second. Yes. Um, <laughs> because I had just been um, watching Friends the, the night before. And um, I actually was thinking in my head uh, when I was seeing David Schwimmer, like, wow, he's you know, such a great actor and we're both from Chicago. I would love to work with him one day. And then I got that call the next day. So that was kind of a weird little synchronicity thing that happened. And um, it was it was really one of the joys of my life just because besides Supernatural, of course, which is like probably even, it was neck and neck with that. Um, because it was like the first time that I think, you know, that a person of color had been on um, Friends and, uh, it just, I wasn't thinking about it at the time, but over the years, the comments that have made the most, uh, meant the most to me were just, um, you know, about that's the first time I've ever seen myself represented on screen um, in, in such a big way. And so that, that made me feel good because I didn't have anything to do with it other than just, you know, being there at the right time. But, um, but the fact that the, the producer no, I'm sorry, the director had seen me in the Joy Luck Club and she um, had uh, thought of me for Ross's girlfriend and she's the one who pitched me. So I actually owe, owe that job to her uh, having that thought. Gail Mancuso, her name is. Anyway, um, so it was fantastic that the cast really embraced me. They, it was my birthday, the very first day, my first day of rehearsal and uh, they all took me out to lunch in a fancy, you know, restaurant right there on the uh, lot with, you know, white tablecloths and everything. And, and I just remember being so nervous, like I'm a little bit nervous right now, even, and even though I'm just in my own house. Um, but I, uh, you know, when I, when I get nervous, I tend to say really stupid things. They just come out of my mouth because I'm running a little bit too fast. And so, um, <laughs> I don't know why I said this, but I turned to Lisa Kudrow and said, so 
you're not nearly as ditzy as you seem on TV. <laughs> and I went, ah, why did I say, oh my gosh, okay, just could I please take that back? And she just literally kind of turned her shoulder to me and turned the other way. And then I had this other really funny thing happen with Matt LeBlanc, which was, he said, um, so where are you from? And I said, I'm from Highland Park, Illinois, which is, I'm almost all Jewish. And so I kind of grew up as a Jap, which is something we used to say back then, but you can't say that anymore. But it actually stands for Jewish American princess, because I was kind of like an honorary Jewish person. So he said, so wait a minute, you're a princess? And I said, no, no. No, it's just a phrase, you know, Japanese American princess. So, so you're from Japan? Like you're, you're from, you're a Japanese princess. And I'm like, okay, no, no, forget it. No, I'm <laughs> so, okay. Anyway, we should probably move on. <laughs> what is your favorite thing about Linda Tran? This is also from Brittany. Um, I, I think I love, and I relate to how protective and loving and badass she is, uh, because you know, in real life, I, I'm not quite as badass as that, although I've never been tested, but I do think that, you know, for me as an actor too, I just feel like no one ever lets me play someone that would kill someone, um, because, you know, I'm five feet tall, but I, I do think that, um, you know, you never know what you might do when you're trying to protect your child. You know, and knowing that as a mom, uh, it just is the deepest love you can experience. And so I've got two boys, they're, wow, they're 19 and 16 now. And so they are the joy and love of my life. I mean, of course my husband too, but <laughs> I just, my kids are really something. They're, they make me laugh every day and sort of the way that my dogs do. I shouldn't compare them to my dogs, but in that same way that they bring joy. And, and I have to say that you, out there, you supernatural family people have brought me so much joy. I mean, I just want to say thank you so much for everything that you, all the support and the love that I feel just through meeting you at the conventions and through social media. Like one of my passions in my life is supporting an organization called Homeboy Industries. And you guys have just like blown it out of the water as far as your support. And I can't, um, thank you enough for that because it's, it just touches me so deeply that you would even care. I, I used to have, um, <laughs> like one friend, fan person send me $2 from their paycheck every week. And I, I, that kind of thing is just, Oh, look, okay, great. Um, it's scrolling on the bottom now. If you, I know times are really, really tough right now. Um, but if you feel so moved, um, their logos up there and the banner is scrolling. Um, so you can write it down or just go to their website and donate. They, they're, they're actually really, um, you know, they're not open right now, but they've been able to offer virtual, um, training classes, support crisis management. So, and then also their cafe is, um, is serving seniors and people with COVID youth people that are, are um, struggling right now. So the greatest organization ever. I can't say enough about it. I've sort of become a, an ambassador for them, a little bit self-appointed, but I think it's a great partnership. Um, okay, let's see. Um, have you and Osric been Zooming <laughs> while in quarantine? Oh my gosh, how are you staying busy in lockdown? Um, I miss Osric so much. We haven't actually been Zooming. We did one um, panel chat together. And so that was really, really great to see him. He is a force, force of nature. I just love that boy so much. He's actually the one who created my Twitter account and taught me about social media because it's, you know, when you're older, it's just harder to learn all that stuff. And he just like, I, I'm really grateful for that friendship so much. Um, Current or, f oh, <laughs> you know what? I'm so sorry. When I first started, I just have to say <laughs> that I thought the question was from Brittany, but Brittany's actually the administrator and she is so great and Warner and, and I just thank the tech people and Stephanie, everyone for helping me here. So there, those questions are actually not from her. They're from you guys, sorry. Um, okay. Um, 
Herfer, current or former shows, what would what would be your dream show to guest star on? Oh wow. Hmm. That's a good one. I have to give that some thought. It would be fun to be on Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. That's a really fun show. It's so gorgeous to watch too. Um any new hobbies or binges due to the quarantine? So um, I play piano and uh, I haven't actually really started yet, but it's sitting right there and it keeps calling to me. So I wanna do that. I, and I paint also, I'm, I, I do oil painting. And so I've been working on that and just trying to do those home workouts. I don't know if you guys are doing that on YouTube, but I started out so strong like three times a week and now I, it just, it's hard to force myself to do it once a week. Um, oh gosh. Have you heard anything about, let's say hi to more people. Oh my gosh, who was your idol growing up? You know, I loved the Beatles and, you know, when I started to become an actor, then of course Meryl Streep was just amazing. Oh, you play piano too, Josephine. What has been your favorite character you've played, voiced? Oh, oh so I'm on a, a few different cartoons. So Futurama and King of the Hill, those are two of my favorite jobs and I'm also on disenchantment right now um I play a character called mop girl and Trixie who's going to be coming out a lot more these days and um I loved Amy in Futurama and then Min in in um King of the Hill um hi from New Jersey hello Teresa oh this is so fun oh my gosh hmm What's the best advice that anyone has ever given you? I kind of like that. Um, let me think for a second. I think that because I'm a pretty sensitive person, that uh, I guess the best advice would be that when people, you know, say something, if they hurl an insult to you, that it, it actually has nothing to do with you that it has everything to do with that other person. And um, people aren't really thinking about you all that much. That's kind of a hard truth to swallow. But that helped me dial down, you know, just my sense of self-consciousness and, um, and, you know, that arrow. Sometimes I walk around and I feel like I can feel what other people are feeling. And I don't know sometimes what's mine and what's theirs. And so I've had to kind of like draw stronger boundaries, which is so interesting because that's so opposite of Linda Tryon. I feel like Linda is super grounded and I can be grounded, but my natural energy is a little bit like boing, boing. And I have to like, just kind of pull it all in. And the, the other thing that I, I, I heard this great quote the other day that I just wanted to share, which is, Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking about yourself less, which I really loved because that's true. If we can turn our attention on the other person that you're with and how can I be of service? How can I, how can I just be present and help? Then all of the attention goes off of yourself and you become less self-conscious and more yourself. So I really loved that. Kelly's sensitive too. Uh, I, you would think I'm a Cancer, but I'm actually a Leo, and um, but I've got Virgo, a lot of Virgo, so um, and everything's in my twelfth house. I don't know if you know about astrology, but all of my planets are in the twelfth house, which is kind of like in the unconscious. Um, let's see. Um, I li really loved working with with Jensen and Jared so much. I, Jared was there for me in those really really tough scenes when I was chained up for a year and all I had to do was like look up and look over to him in his eyes. And Jensen, I, I've actually told this story at conventions before, but I think it's just one that sticks with me that, you know, obviously you guys all know that he's really not hard to look at and he he's just so beautiful. And I found that when I first met him, you know, I kept staring at him and then I would catch myself staring at him and then try to like, just look away. And then my head would just like naturally, just like a magnet, like just, 
like that. And and so I'm I'm married. I'm happily married. But it just you know there's something about beauty like that. Beauty really offers so much to the world. And he was someone who was kind of like taking care of every one on set and I felt like he um it was natural that he would be directing some of the episodes because that's just his natural personality <laughs> and then in that that first episode when I'm you know when the king of hell takes over my body and he's trying to slit my throat and I'm up against the wall and you know like he he was like this and I was like this and he was, and I was trying to hold off his arm, slitting my throat. And I was like looking up going, you know, I could stay here for another 20 minutes if you want. Um, <laughs> but no, get back in character. Anyway, it, it was just such a joy shooting those episodes. I, I really miss it. It's too bad that they didn't bring Linda back one more time because um, it would have been nice to have a little bit more just to see what happens with her. That's a common problem with Jensen, I know. Amy, hi, Amy. We understand you, Lauren. Oh, my gosh. Angie Nandri, LOL. Oh, you guys, I wish I could see you. Well, actually, there's a Zoom chat that, that's going to be on Wednesday um, where I get to be with, I think, 10 people where it would be more like a, a just a Zoom chat that you would do with your friends, and I'll I'll get to see those folks then. So if you want to sign up for that Wednesday, um, let's see, what else did I want to talk about? Um, I also wanted to mention, um, two other, uh, two other organizations that I love and just wanted to kind of throw out there to get the word out. Um, one is called, um, Project Angel Food and they serve 2000 meals a day to, um, folks who have serious illness. So, you know, cancer or, HIV or COVID, um, and those meals are tailored medically for them specifically. And they've been not only open during this COVID, but they've been um, adding more meals um, than they normally do. So it's scrolling again. And I, uh, I bought this mask, isn't it so glittery and fun? Um, that I think you can get if you go to their uh, Instagram site, you can get the link. But anyway, um, so they're doing some really great work. So if you can throw a little a couple bucks their way, that would be awesome. And then the last thing I just wanted to mention was, oh my gosh, I meant to have it here. But um, it's uh, Fangasm Lynn's book. I don't know if you guys have um, uh, read it, but it's it's all, a lot of supernatural actors uh, wrote a chapter. And, and, and it's just, um, you know, it's so interesting that these three organizations or these things, I, these three things I wanted to promote all have to do with like nourishing people and, and like homeboy nourishing with, you know, like just trying to get them back to, um, back to a life that, that's stable and nourishing their spirit and, and through food because homeboy home girl cafe caters and then project angel food is also nourishing people and this book i also feel like nourishes folks too um and uh i just feel like it's um it's a way to give back to the supernatural family and um wait is it scrolling there do you have it up oh, i'm sorry uh there it is there you can see the book now um, there will be peace when they're done. And it's, uh, yeah, I think that this show has changed so many people's lives, the people in it and the people watching it. And also, um, part of the proceeds from the book, um, are go to random acts, you know, which of course, you know, was started by Misha and Misha is such an angel, <laughs> literally in the work that he does in the world and, and his role. And so um, I, I love that that they're giving part of the, the profits to that too. There, you can see um, how to get the book there. And I, I have a chapter in it and, and uh, it was great to be asked to be a part of it. Um, let's see. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> if you had your own show, who would you want as a co-star or love interest? Um, <laughs> um, gosh. 
You know what? Back in the 90s, I actually had a few um, deals at the different networks, all three of them, as ABC, NBC, and CBS, to have my own show. It was a sitcom, and um, the, the pilots were written, the, they were shot, but they didn't get picked up. And, and un unfortunately, like I don't think that was so long ago, the 90s, that I think that um, the networks didn't feel ready yet to have... Um, a show featuring an all Asian cast, but that has all changed. And so I'm really excited that there's been so much movement in that, um, in that way in, regarding, you know, just people of color being more present on state uh, on, you know, in all the mediums. Oh, gosh. Oh, good. Yeah. You have even both the books. Wow. Oh my gosh. I love you guys too. Um, okay. Let's stay focused here. You have, uh, what are the differences? Oh, what are the differences and joys of doing voice work? Um, you know, I can't wait to get back to the voice work too. I miss it so much. And, you know, whenever I tell people um, who are interested in getting into voice work, if you happen to be an actor watching this right now, um, there really isn't a difference in the sense that when I'm performing at the mic, you know, you only have your voice, but you, the best way in order to, to just accomplish the job is to do it as if you're on camera and you're using your whole body and, and you're actually talking to someone so that you, you're not just like looking at the script, but you're really trying to figure out all the beats of the scene, just that you, the same way that you would, um, in anything that you would be acting in because you only have your voice then. And so it's good to just channel it all, um, just be as present as possible. And the other thing, if you did want to get into the voiceover world, um, there's my fellow actor, his name is D. Bradley Baker, and he has a website. And if you go to that website, he has an entire, like it's so much information, like anything you would need to know about how to get started. And I think that you can click on it through there. Um, I think it's called, I want to be an, a voice actor, but you can find it through D Bradley Baker's site. That's D E E and then Bradley and then Baker. Um, but I love the voiceover word. It just, I've actually in my, gosh, my 30 years of doing this, I've never met one jerk in the entire voiceover business. And I don't know why people are so down to earth and nice, but they just are. And, um, you know, I can't really say that in the on-camera world. Like I've encountered some, you know, some bigger egos that you have to kind of work with. Not on Supernatural, but um, I was a little afraid of Mark Shepard at first. But then that quickly dissipated when I realized what a sweetheart he is. And he actually coached me through a little bit how to do his voice when, when um, he took over my body. It was great. I still remember he was saying... Just be bored by everything. Nothing really. It's all a game. And it was, he actually, like, I got into the rhythm with him. It was really, really fun. Um, yeah, there is still a lot of voiceover acting going on during the quarantine. I just am so grateful. Um, and I do have recording equipment set up in my husband's closet, which is the tiniest thing room in our house. And it's so hot in there, <laughs> but I can turn the fan on and off. A favorite Beatles song. Oh my gosh. In my life, I love, um, I used to sing I Will when I was young with the guitar. And um, I, John Lennon was always my guy because, you know, he was into an Asian chick. So I thought, oh, wow, I've got an in. You know, I actually, <laughs> it's the only fan letter I've ever written <laughs> was to John Lennon when I was, I think, 13. And I actually thought he would write me back. But um, <laughs> you know who wrote me back, though, now, now that I think of it, this wasn't really a fan letter. I did a movie with Gene Wilder called See No Evil, Hear No Evil. And his, and Gilda Radner died. Uh, shortly after, and I reached out to him to just offer my condolences, and he wrote me back the most incredible letter, and I was sobbing, and I still have it. What a genuine, incredible person he was. I loved him. Um, 
I would love to meet you. Are you going to New Jersey Con? I wish. Wow, are they still gonna are they gonna be back up and running? Oh, I love Hey Jude too. Um, oh, you, yes, you can get the book at bookstores. By the way, I love you too. Um, would you sing for us at an SBN? Oh, I would love to sing for you. I don't have a good voice though. I have a loud voice, but I don't have a good voice. Um, but I did do that karaoke night. That was so much fun. I did the Gwen Stefani song. What was it again? I forgot now. Oh my gosh, my memory has gone. Um, you know, I was dancing to it. Um, the one where she, sh holla back. That's what I did. <laughs> it was so fun. Oh my gosh. I had, it's been a while since I've, you know, been at an SBN convention. I'd love to come back sometime. Um, I was supposed to do a convention in Philadelphia this past May, but they've, they've, um, they've rescheduled till next year. So at least we'll get to do it. Um, you said everyone has a good voice. You just got to find your style. Oh my gosh. You sound like my mom. That's, that's not always true, but what's my favorite breakfast cereal? Oatmeal. It's so boring, isn't it? But I love the comfort that oatmeal and ice cream bring me. I can't really eat either one too much though, just because I have a little problem with my sugars, which is probably came from eating too much sugar my whole life. It always just gave me such a, a lift sugar. <laughs> Um, but I can still eat dark chocolate. Thank God. Um, let's see. Uh, favorite day is my birthday. Oh, hello, Sarah. Happy birthday. Oh my gosh. I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, have you ever stolen anything from a set? That is such a funny question. Um, actually, no. At the end of, of the shows that you tend to do, they'll let you, or, you know, you know what I do? I ask. There, there are a lot of times when something means something uh, to me as far as like a prop, and at the end of the, the show, I'll, I'll ask if I can have it and take it home. Um, but I was raised Catholic, you know, I think, I don't think it would be worth the guilt I would suffer going forward. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, what is my new favorite quarantine food? Unfortunately, it's, ice cream but i can't like i said i can't really eat it but there's this brand called rebel i don't know if any of you guys have any problem with like diabetes or anything like that or where you have to watch your sugar this ice cream is so good it's it's only like five grams of, of carbs per per serving and but take it easy when you first start because it doesn't have sugar alcohol but it has something in it that might um, like play, you know, mess with your tummy a little bit, but now my body's really used to it. And I just love that stuff. It's always sold out at Ralph's. Um, so uh, let's see, do I like Alice in Wonderland? Yeah, I liked that when I was growing up. Yeah, that was fun. I just love anything with fantasy. I love the gr graphics. I wasn't really, yeah, I like things that, that kind of are on, you know, like even Supernatural is a little bit dark for the things that I tend to watch um, because I don't like scary. And um, the, the special effects were really good there. So, you know, but the humor kind of like, I think that's one of the things that makes Supernatural such a great show that they, that they have so much humor. Oh, I also wanted to say that during quarantine, I've been watching this show called Deer, D-E-A-R. It's on Apple TV. And what they do is they take an icon from all walks of life um, and whoever it is. So like they've done Oprah and Gloria Steinem, you know, um, and and the, the celebrity reads letters that they've received from people and how the people have, um, how that celebrity has changed their life and, and really set their life on a different trajectory. So they have the actual person reading their letter and then they do like little reenactments of, of their life story and how it was affected by this person. And then Lin-Manuel, I, I cried every single episode. I think there were like eight or nine of them. I've already watched all of them, but I just thought that, you know, that's, that's what we all wanna do. We wanna feel connected and, and people, um, can really influence others when they have a, a 
platform and um, their hearts in the right place. And uh, so I just found every single episode so moving. Jane Goodall, Ali Reisman, um, Spike Lee. Yeah, it's, it's really good if you're looking for something to watch. What else have you guys, maybe you can just write to me, what else should I be watching right now? Um, any suggestions? Um, the King of Staten Island? I don't know that. Um, <laughs> uh, but I think that I, right now at least, I'm looking for things that, that might kind of lift me up a little bit, like, like this is right now. Um, 12, what was your dream job growing up? What was my dream job growing up? <laughs> I don't have any tattoos, <laughs> by the way. Um, my dream job going up was, uh, growing up, I was a dancer when I first, uh, so I started pretty late. I was 13 years old and um, it was the perfect way for me to express myself because I um, was really, really shy. Like at first, when I was really young, my grandpa called me little tiger. And then when I got to kind of understand that I was the only Asian person in my town, I became much more self-conscious and withdrawn. But my initial energy, I guess maybe that's the Leo, was a lot bolder, like Linda Tran. And then I kind of had to fight my way back, and I still feel like I'm fighting my way back to get to that place of who, who Linda Tran is, really. Um, and uh, dancing was the perfect way for me to express myself and still feel like I, I didn't have to talk. And so I had this fortuitous thing happen where the show A Chorus Line um, came through Chicago and they held auditions and there was a part in it for a small Asian girl and I couldn't act or sing, but I could dance really well. And so my friends dragged me to that um, that audition and I ended up getting it and I was 17. And so I, they needed me to be 18 in, uh, until I, you know, could really start performing. So they hired me, they, they trained me and gave me some acting lessons and some vocal lessons. And uh, I toured with that show for a year and then I moved to New York and did it on Broadway for another year. So like a, two years altogether. So that to me was just, I still, I cry when I hear, oh, someone else loves it. Um, I, I cry when I hear the soundtrack still because of all the memories that it brought back. And and so, um, and Bibi Neuwirth was in the show with me. You, you may know her from Cheers and Madam Secretary. She's on everything. I just adore her. And uh, she was playing Sheila and I was Connie. And uh, we still keep in touch. She's great. She can still dance too. I gave it up a long time ago. So when I was in that show, the older, I was so young that the older cast members kind of took me under their wing and, and uh, gave me great advice, which was, you know, being a dancer is like being an athlete. So you'll be done by the time you're 35. So you really should study acting. So that's what I did in New York. I went to the neighborhood playhouse and I studied the Meisner technique. Oh, here's a question. What do you miss most about Andy Mack? Oh my gosh, I loved being on that show so much um, because because of so many things. The cast was just like so sweet and amazing, and it and it fe was featuring three you know <laughs> three Asian women from three different generations. And I thought, how bold of Disney to um, you know have a regular cast member come out as being gay, feature all these people of color because there was, you know, uh, Sophia Wiley's black. And then, you know, we did so many stories about, uh, I think what kids really um, struggle with. So especially for Disney, it was much closer to how life really is. And um, all the, like one of the main characters, Asher Angel, his character has anxiety, which I think there's a statistic that one in four kids have anxiety. And, it, and I can't imagine growing up with all this social media now and just having everybody know all your stuff and all the comparison that, that happens is really, like I, I had a teacher once that told me that like the root of unhappiness is comparing yourself to others, which 
I think is so true because, you know, you could be going around just happy and then all of a sudden you realize that so-and-so has done or gotten something better than you and then suddenly you're upset. Like, I, I really, really try myself to dial that down. And, um, yeah. Hi, Jonathan. I know about the anxiety. It's, it's really prevalent. And, you know, I, I've always struggled with it too. And so I think it's great that in this day that we can talk so much more freely about, um, what's actually going on in our lives and, and, you know, just be a little bit more courageous that way and realize that we are so not alone. And that's also the beauty of the supernatural fandom, how, you know, cause I, I do think that at the end of the day, what we all want is to just feel like we belong and that we're okay. And, and, um, you know, I do meditate a bit and I, I think that sometimes when you're trying your best to be loving with yourself, which I think is really important right now during this lockdown to be as loving with yourself as possible. You know, you don't even have to like go into thoughts about, I love myself. I'm, you know, and all those other affirmations, you don't even have to do that. Like, because sometimes for me, like there's resistance to those thoughts. No, you're not, you're, you're not all that, you know, but if you just instead just put your focus on your breath and you just, you know, that's all you're doing is you're breathing in and breathing out. It really does kind of calm and center you. And just to know that you're existing is enough and that you're just being alive is equal to everyone else's life, that no lives are more important than others. We're all human beings. We're all in this together and that we all have value because we're alive. Um, so it's sort of like something you can go to no matter what your upbringing has been like. You know, if you, if you suffered any sort of trauma at all, you can still go back to your breath and know that you're here and you survived and you have value and you have something to give. These are, these are the thoughts I've been working with myself, um, these days. So there, there've been a lot of upsides to this COVID-19. I feel like it's actually healed a lot too, because we've been forced to focus on connection. You know, with my own family, I always had a hard time having traditional family dinners where we all would get together and sit down. I just couldn't get it together. Everybody was so busy and had different things going on. And I was just trying to get them to their practices and rehearsals and, and you know, the, my own work and everything. But now it's been such a joy to have my two boys home we have these long ass dinners, like three hours where we'll just talk. And I feel like, wow, I would never have gotten that. I feel much more appreciation for the things that I used to have that I don't have right now. I have like a much more appreci deep appreciation for my husband and how much he gives me. And it just, I don't, oh, and the other thing is that I have a little bit of a addiction um, to shopping a little bit because that lift of clicking something, I don't really even want it. Like I'm in a colossal waste of time because when it comes, then I just return it because I don't really, I want to stay on a budget. Right. But for some reason it would give me a little lift as if I needed that thing to make myself feel okay. Right. Which doesn't work. And, um, but during this COVID lockdown, I've really kind of like pulled everything in and I put a little sticker on my computer that said, all you need is less, you know, instead of all you need is love. And, um, I just love that thought. All you need is less. Cause it's like, do I really need another cute top? Where am I going? Like, this is the cutest top that I've put on in three months for you guys. And, and I feel like, um, it's just, uh, it's not necessary to have so much stuff. And so I feel like that that really would not have happened if I, if we didn't, you know, have this COVID 
19. It just, I, I always wanted to change it, but I, I just couldn't do it. It almost felt like a little addiction. So I like the sticker and I, and that's also, so it's nice to kind of think about the ways in which, you know, this, this COVID-19 um, has, has affected us all. And hopefully we're all staying safe and healthy. And then also the, the Black Lives Matter movement. I really, you know, all, all of this that's happening, I feel like all we have left are like locusts that we need to get. You know, we've got fires and earthquakes and plague and riots. It's like, oh, we don't have frogs, I guess, yet. But it's just, oh, thanks. Thanks for saying my, my top was cute. But I just feel like, um, you know, I'm trying to support the Black Lives Matter movement as much as possible. Uh, my wish though too, is just for everyone to have more patience and compassion with, with themselves and with everyone in the sense of how and in what way and how much that people are or are not supporting the Black Lives Matter movement. Because of course, I'm so grateful for the people who have their foot on the pedal and are just, you know, not taking it off because change definitely needs to happen. And I know that being a person of color, that, that we, we owe so much to the black community because they, they've changed so much for the Asian community. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that, you know, I feel like sometimes when you put yourself out there, like you can't win, like you're either posting too much about it or you're not posting enough about it or you're posting the wrong things about it. And it just, it's upsetting to me that, that it's stirring up so much judgment. And I kind of feel like it's also because people have lost their jobs and they're, they're anxious and they're angry. And so we're already starting out that way. So, it, you know, it kind of like just fuels the fire. But to me, I, I just am trying to just take the most positive approach to the whole situation that I possibly can. Um, let's see. Uh, Oh my gosh, it's already 10.42. I knew that this would go fast. Um, how has life been affected after Supernatural? I feel I feel like because of Osric and being connected to all of, of you, like I've only gotten so much joy and support from having been on that show. I did three episodes, that's it. And yet it just kept rolling out. Um, in, in fact, in, in respect to all of the the love and the support. So it's, it's only been a blessing. I, I, uh, it's, it's, um, it's really been such a gift. Um, if you could have any other job other than acting, what would you be? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just reading some of the other things about Scooby-Doo. Um, I'm not sure that I have any other skill set than something creative. Um, so I love painting, but I'm not really that good at it. I love graphics. I love, yeah, graphic art too. Uh, if I could just be, come back as another, in another life with a, with a different talent, it'd be so great to be a classical pianist or an opera singer. It sounds so out there, but I'm just in awe sometimes of how moving pieces can be. I love Mozart and Sometimes some of those real juicy arias just make me cry and cry like Nessun Dorma. <laughs> I remember on America's Got Talent, Paul Potts sang Nessun Dorma and my kids were so obsessed with him and we actually went to see him in concert. <laughs> Scooby-Doo is your favorite cartoon? That's so great. I was on Scooby-Doo for a, a few episodes when it was on as a series. Um, but I'm obsessed with Snoopy right now. I feel like I'm regressing a little bit because I just have always loved Snoopy. Here's my journal that I have now. And I bought some Snoopy socks. This is not what you would think of Linda Tran, but it's something very comforting about Snoopy. Does anybody else like Snoopy out there? <laughs> um, Josephine, I love you all. People are thanking me. Is it time to go? I think it's time to go. That's why they're saying thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. I love you. And I hope I see you, see you at some point at a convention. Wow. Snoopy's cool. There's a little lag time. So cute. <laughs>
You guys are the best. I'll see you on, on Twitter and Instagram too, okay? And um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here. You're amazing. I hope that was fun for you. It was fun, really fun for me. Can you say my name? Yes, Sarah Amore. Oh, thank you for donating in my honor. Oh my gosh, who was that? Uh, I couldn't say the name, sorry. Joe Cool is the best. Teresa, was that you? I don't know, but thank you whoever it was that donated. <laughs> I will wear my Snoopy socks to the next convention. I'm so glad it was fun for you guys. Bye. Bye, Amy. I'm so happy you guys liked it. I hope I made you laugh or smile. What's the painting over my left shoulder? Oh, that's an old Japanese antique screen. It's cool, isn't it? So peaceful. Hi, Jen from New Jersey. Hi, Natal Natalia. Yes, I hope to see you too at a con. You've made my day, Sam. Sam's girl. You're not Sam, you're Sam's girl. Don't worry about it if you can't donate. Honestly, you guys, we're all in this together. It's so trying right now. Thank you. I love my house. My house is my sanctuary. Cat lady, thank you so much for all your support. Oh my gosh, Krista. Oh, Vegas. Thank you about my house, the compliments about my house. I wanna give you a hug too. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. I think it's it I think it's time you guys to say goodbye. I love you, Warner. I guess it's time and I want to say thank you to Warner and Brittany too because they're running this behind like they're the puppet masters and uh we wouldn't be able to do this without them. So, thank you guys again. I'll see you soon. Let's have a round of applause and thank uh, Lauren Tom for joining us today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Brittany with Creation. Um, tipping is now closed. Congratulations to Vesna for winning. You'll be getting an email shortly for your five minute Zoom call with her. And we hope you all join us for the rest of our panels today and check our website for future ones.